Yeah, can, can, I'll give you two stories, okay? They're like, one is from sport, the other one not. So one of them was meeting Roger Federer again because he was on the Swiss team. And the cool thing that happened is I met him at the airport a couple months before that. And I ran to, into him in, in the lounge, you know? And I quickly introduced myself, obviously said that I'm a huge fan. That was in the, at the airport. And I said, my name is David. And then we were there and he came because he was usually like in, in close to Wimbledon, which was on the other side of the athletic like village. And so, but he came to say hi to the whole Swiss team. And when it was my time to go and say hi, he's like, David, right? And I was like, yeah, you know? So, so that was pretty cool. Now we could all take a picture with him and have a chat and just see like what he has to say. Um, that was wonderful. And then the other one was that when we were done swimming, we were done after like 10 days in the first, first half of the game. So we had to be mindful of all the other athletes, right? We, we couldn't like party in, in the rooms or whatever because the other athletes needed to sleep. And so we wanted to be respectful of that. So we took it outside, but we, we partied, I partied. <laughs> and one of my best friends from America, this is my roomie from University of Virginia. He, he came over, he was in London. Uh, he came over for the Olympics and we brought him, we smuggled him into the village in the middle of the night when we came back at like morning at four in the morning. And he was with a Czech swimmer girl there. So he left with her. They just like, I went to my room and they, they left to her room. And I gave him some like Swiss shirts and like the accreditation, you know, that he can wear in the morning so they don't see him and throw him out. And we said, okay, next morning we see each other at nine o'clock in the Swiss house. And I was on top of the balcony, right? And then you, I, I looked down on the village and I, you saw like a lot going on there. There's like a couple of blocks and in the middle, like a park. And I see one idiot in a turquoise shirt that he wore like, you know, last night when he was partying with his camera going like this, <laughs> walking around, right? And he was just like the odd guy out, but he made it to to my apartment he got kicked out a bit later though because he didn't have the accreditation but that that was also fun but we were met very mindful and and of other athletes that had still you know the most important competition of their lives right so but it was fun it was fun see these are the stories we all need to hear because we only hear about what goes on at the event at the moment it's like we need to hear more about the experience and what it is for you guys. So I love hearing those stories because it shows that you guys are enjoying every single second of those weeks that you are there at the Olympics. Yeah. And all, and can you imagine like the pressure that is gone when you're, when you're done? <laughs> it's like weights taken off of you almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, exactly. When you're getting too close to the end of your career or your professional swimming career, what is going through your mind and how hard was it to make that decision to, to transfer and move on to the next step in your life? Okay. And I want to ask you a question about that in a second as well. Um, with the com For me, I have to tell you, I had a lot of time thinking about it while I was swimming. I was like, I'm not really enjoying this, but I keep going. Maybe it's just a phase and maybe it'll go away. And it took me a couple of weeks and it just didn't go away. And I started, you know, thinking about it before I went to sleep. Also, it's like, I'm not enjoying that. I don't want to get up in the morning. But I kept pushing through because I thought it might just be like my mind, you know, playing tricks on me. But it didn't go away. And after a couple of weeks, I clearly remember it was Friday afternoon practice at like four o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. And we jump in. And for the warm up, after 10 minutes, I was like, okay. This is it. I got out of the pool. I told my coach, I'm done swimming. I'll never come back. And I left. Wow. And, and it was a good decision. I mean, like, uh, you know, as I said, a lot of doors opened after that. But of course, I had some worries. What are my parents going to say? What's my coach going to say? What are, you know, am I letting anybody down and so on? And I would love to hear from you also what you how it is for you, like, you know, making important decisions. What, what, what's your process for that? So I always kind of map out a game plan when it comes to decisions that I make. It could be something tight, small or something large, but I always look at what's the positives and the negatives from it. 
And over time, I have told myself, you cannot say no to anything. You have to just go for it and try it. Like no regrets nowadays. I think even with doing the show, I'm like, I don't know how to do a show. I don't know how to edit. I don't know how to do that. But I told myself, I'm always willing to learn and learn as I go. And that has been the best decision I made because I look at what I've done and the people that I've talked to and it's been worth it. It's been worth it completely. But any decision, I always say, just go for it. What's the worst thing that can happen? It doesn't end up right. There's a little error. It ends up being correct and positive. So I think that's what I have learned from this past few years is you can't regret anything. You have to go for it and try because you don't want to look 20 years from now and say, I wish I did this. Yeah. That's the worst. I mean, that's just if you, and you can do that. We, I do that sometimes with my athletes. If somebody needs some extra motivation, we go, we go in the future.